So we're talking with Coach about uh, Wichita State and, and your ball screen defense because their pigs roll hard to the basket. What kind of challenge does that present for you? Because I know you edge on screens. Yeah. I mean, it's a challenge, but, you know, at the same time, it's something that I do. You know, I think I'm a, a good ball screen defender. So just have to stay solid and stick to uh, what Coach has planned for us on the ball screen. Yeah, Wichita State, so stingy defensively. You saw them here in Tampa. They held you, uh, I believe, under 55 points in that game. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about attacking their defense? How do you go about adjusting to them? Uh, just, you know, just getting good shots, making good shots, and just moving the ball. Just keep the ball moving, you know. Don't, don't get stagnated. And, you know, I, we should have a, a higher scoring game on our side. You're potentially going to be playing UConn for the last time as a member of the AAC. Mm -hmm. Can you just talk about what the program has meant to this league? I know you haven't been here for a long time, but just the pedigree that they've brought to the American team. I mean, that's a uh, historic, historical uh, school right there, you know. They won championships. They had a lot of great players. So, I mean, it, it, them being in our conference has done a lot, and we look forward to playing them, you know, for the last time and getting, getting a win. Coach, got a two-game road trip coming up, starting with Wichita State, a game that was really close here, and then they just kind of went on a run and, and made some plays. Yeah, you, you, and we had the, the, about a seven, eight-minute stretch. We didn't make a basket. You know, uh, I thought defensively we were very good. We're going to have to do a better job rebounding the ball. I thought some of their offensive rebounds hurt us. Um, but we got to find ways to, you know, when we're in a lull offensively to manufacture some points, either in transition or with the offensive glass. Obviously, I think we're, we're playing better uh, than we were playing back then. We're rebounding the ball better, especially offensively. Um, you know, and, and uh, other than the first 20 minutes against Tulsa, you know, uh, uh, the way we've played is much more competitive and, and capable of playing against and beating some of the best teams in the league. And when you go on the road, obviously at Wichita, a very difficult place to play. But our guys have responded pretty good in those situations. So I think our guys are looking forward to the challenge. With the way Wichita State plays, I'm guessing transition defense and, and ball screen defense is going to be a priority because they're big. They roll hard. Right, and they do a really good job of um, – let's start that again. That's all right. You just screwed up the entire press conference. <laughs> uh, transition defense is number one. They really hurt us in that. And, and, and it was more in scramble situations. When you think of transition, sometimes you think of just straight layups. They hit three big three-point shots against a defense that wasn't set, but we had enough guys back. We got to communicate better than that. And then the ball screen defense is always very, very important against Wichita State, as is the post defense on Enchinake. You know, you got to do a really good job of not giving him early post position. Um, but they're, you know, one of the reasons that they're, you know, in and out of the top 25 is they have a lot of different weapons. You know, uh, Stevenson played tremendous over the weekend. Um, but at times, it's other guys that, that step up. Uh, two young guards that are very good. And then, obviously, in, in, in Dennis, you have one of the premier players in this league. You know, was on the all-freshman team. He's going to be a great player. Uh, you know, will go down as probably, you know, over two more years, one of the best players that's ever played at Wichita State. One of those other players, Tyson Ntn. what kind of challenge does he present to your team? You, you can't give him a sliver of daylight because he's good enough to put the ball on the deck and drive by you, and he's a, obviously an exceptional shooter. I think, you know, sometimes I, I don't know him at all. I only watched him on film, uh, but I, I, I like everything I hear about him in terms of his work ethic and different things like that. He's a player that obviously has made an impact in their program. Yeah, you guys have been operating on the perimeter a lot, especially against Houston and Tulsa. Do you feel like getting back to attacking the rim in the paint is key to success on this trip? Yeah, I do. You know, it's you know, it's interesting. You play two teams that's really hard to score in the post and on drives with Houston and Tulsa, with Tulsa's zone and with Houston's help defense and post trap defense. Uh, we got to get the ball inside to our post players more right now, and we got to get back to driving the paint and playing off our, our penetration. Um, you know, the reason those two teams are having great success is defensively, they don't give up those easy points. Uh, 
double berry post ups, drives at the basket. So we got to get back to doing that and, uh, you know, doing that with the efficiency that we've had in the three games previous where we were doing a great job of that. So we have to get back to that for sure. A player like David Collins who can go on runs easily, but also at times can disappear, at least on the offensive side, can't, especially going against the Wichita State at home, who's so good. How do you make sure that he stays involved throughout the game? Well, you know, sometimes, you know, with, with, with different options and different things like that, Keeping him engaged in it is, you know, every couple of plays we got to make sure, you know, he's a primary option for us. Um, you know, finding him when he's open, getting him the ball on in the open court where he's very, very dangerous. Um, and then, you know, the one thing that we've talked with David about is just being more, you know, even more aggressive. You know, when he's open, um, you know, he's proven his shooting percentages is down, but but we need him to be in these last this last round of games even more aggressive. When he's open, he needs to look to shoot it. He needs to look to drive it um, and be very, very assertive on the offensive end. The fact that you guys are still looking at a five or a four seed in this conference despite missing Alexis Yetnet for the whole season, does that give you your team confidence going into these tough games? Well, I, I think so. And I think they also take a look at, you know, we've played now everybody in, in the league um, and you know, we feel pretty confident in where we stack up. You know, I think there might be teams a little bit better, or we might be a little bit better than some, and we're probably equal with a lot. But now you need to go and prove it on the court. And gaining some momentum in these last six games heading into the tournament uh, would be very, very important. And uh, to really be playing our best basketball, you know, I, I thought we played very well uh, for four and a half out of the last five games. We had a terrible half against Tulsa, no question about it. And that was more so on the offensive end. Defensively, we were pretty good, you know. Uh, as poorly as we shot, they shot worse than us in the first half. We just had the turnovers, which contributed to it. Um, so, you know, and, and I thought for 40 minutes, uh, we battled and competed very well against Houston and obviously won the three other games. So it's really important that we continue on that upward trend with our performance and our, our, our energy level and following the game plans and the discipline to our system. And if we can do that, we'll be able to get some wins and head into Dallas feeling pretty good. Yeah, this is potentially the last matchup you'll ever have with UConn in this conference. I know they're on a downswing right now, but can you just talk about what they've meant to the AAU scene and what the impact of their has been? Well, when you think of UConn, it's a national brand. And, and the only thing that I would say is, you know, they, they won their last game. Uh, they have lost an incredible amount of close games this year, overtime games, games they've had leads in. And some of it has to do with the injuries. When you lose Polly, uh, he's a weapon for them. He gives them a, a dimension that no other guy on their team gives. And that's hard. You don't have someone just to fill in. And now losing a, a cook as well with his injury, um, it just puts him in a, in a, in a difficult spot. Um, but with the guys they're playing, they're as good as anybody in the league, and they've proven that with the games that they've played. Um, you know, it, it, understand why they would make the move with their tradition and history in the Big East. It's disappointing. Um, but they've been a great member of our league winning the national championship, different things like that. Um, you know, and, and, and I have an unbelievable amount of respect for Coach Hurley as well and what he's building there.